busy in uh, our top stories this morning. Local rivers have been rising while you were sleeping. At least one in the last few hours has moved, pa moved past major flood stage. So look at this. Every red dot you see on this map shows a river forecasted to hit moderate flood stage. The purple meaning major flood stage. So we have team coverage this morning. Let's start with CC who is live near the Crow River, which is expected to rise higher than it has in nine years. CC. Yeah, and I can definitely uh, tell that just from this morning, the water has continued to rise since we've been here for the past almost two hours. If you take a look behind me, you just see how high the water is right now. That's the bridge that's closed off this morning. That's been closed off for a couple days and you see the water is right at the bottom of that. So pretty high, a lot of debris floating through this water. Now we've been checking in with the National Weather Service all morning just to get updates about how high the water is rising and uh, earlier overnight it was about 18.63 feet but just an hour and a half ago when we checked in the latest report it's showing 18.74 feet so just continuing to rise this morning we're in that major flood stage at this point and the uh, rising is not done yet so this morning the bridge avenue river bridge as you can see it's closed off and barricades have been put up on both sides. Some residents say the bridge being closed is probably the biggest impact because it's the easiest way to get on and off Highway 12. Then sections of 90th Street are also closed this morning and the city is going to have to install a flood wall downtown here. The city is asking residents to be careful and just respect the force of the river as these levels continue to rise. But officials say the river is expected to crest at some point tomorrow, just over 19 feet. Jason, Alicia. All right, Cece, thank you. And we are also following flooding along the St. Croix River. And Jennifer, people there are just 24 hours away from possibly historic flooding. They are about 24 hours away. You're right, Jason, from reaching major flood stage. We have a different vantage point for you this morning of what this flooding looks like. So I want you to take a look. We're in downtown Stillwater. That is the downtown. That's where you were standing before if you were watching earlier in the show. And I want to show you this massive flood wall they have downtown. Sandbags all over it. If you look through the center of your screen right now, you can see this flood wall extends the entire riverfront down the length of downtown Stillwater. And they have maybe every couple blocks or so, there's a squad car just kind of parked, hanging out. We assume making sure people don't try to get over that wall. And this is why, because I want you to take a look at the St. Croix down here. This is about 0.3 feet away from reaching that major flood stage. As we said, about 24 hours from now is what the National Weather Service is predicting. And about a foot away from cresting, that's expected to hap happen later in the week, according again to the National Weather Service. You can, of course, see the lift bridge there in the distance as well. Uh, all of that in place to prevent that flooding from happening. And it's not just the downtown riverfront here in Stillwater that's affected by this. Of course, people who live here are impacted by the flooding too. There's a neighborhood uh, not far from here where their main road to get to their homes is covered with water. So they can't drive their cars. They've got to park on higher ground and they have kind of a unique way of getting home, getting to and from their house now that it's uh, blocked in by water. We're gonna bring you that story coming up in just 30 minutes. Wow, crazy visual, so close to uh, reaching that flood stage there. Yeah. Jen, thank you. And those communities are, I mean, they are used to it, but it's been a while since we've seen these, these threats of major right. flooding. Yeah. And now we have to watch those other rivers that are in that moderate risk, that, that red bubble. Now those rivers will run the risk too uh, with the incoming rain this week, tomorrow, through Thursday. Mm -hmm. So very uh, not ideal. Not good timing for sure. All right, guy, thanks. Yeah, this morning, $40 million from the state is actually being set aside to help communities impacted by all of the flooding. Governor Walls signed the bill into law about 15 hours ago. The bill means there won't need to be a special session to approve any funding. The money is for any state disasters that may happen that don't qualify for federal aid. If you'd like to get the latest on spring flooding risks in your area, you can download our free Care 11 weather app. You'll get personalized forecasts, the radar, and weather alerts sent right to your cell phone. You can find this app wherever you get your apps. We need to catch you up on some other breaking news we've been following within the last four hours. The crews are investigating a house fire over in St. Paul. This is new video overnight from the scene near Earl Street and Dawson Avenue. We're told it happened around 10 last night. By the time we arrived on the scene, it appeared fire crews had put out that fire. 
We have reached out to the fire department about an hour and a half ago, but we could not get any more information, but we will keep you updated. We're following a developing situation right now out of Kansas City, where charges have filed have been filed in the shooting of 16 year old Ralph Yarl. Police say 85 year old Andrew Lester shot Yarl when the teen rang his doorbell. Yarl says he was trying to pick up his siblings from a friend's house, but went to the wrong home. Yarl is going to be OK. As of right now, Lester is not in custody. And take a look at this new video overnight of protests in Akron, Ohio. This is in response to a grand jury not charging eight police officers in the death of Jalen Walker. The 25 year old who was shot by police last summer, according to reports, Walker was shot 46 times in under seven seconds. Officials say he fired at least one round at the officers during a chase. Well, back here at home, ex-Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin must now decide his next step. The Minnesota Court of Appeals denied his request for a new state trial for the murder of George Floyd. Chauvin's attorneys said he could not get fair trials in a uh, fair trial in Hennepin County because of the massive publicity in the case. One judge on the deciding panel writes police officers have a dangerous and challenging job, but no one is above the law. This morning, the body of Deputy Josh Owen is back home in Glenwood, Minnesota. Deputy Owen was shot and killed Saturday while answering a domestic violence call in Cyrus, Minnesota. Hundreds showed up for procession yesterday in Glenwood. They watched as over 100 law enforcement vehicles escort his body back to the community he served. He loved his family so much. I see a lot of people that feel like I feel, you know, sorrow and uh, hoping that things will get better. Incredibly sad. Deputy Owen was honored at the Capitol yesterday before ending the session. Senator Westrom, who represents Pope County, asked for a moment of silence to honor the fallen deputy. And this morning, we now know Owen's funeral will be Saturday at 1030 a.m. at Minnewaska High School. Visitation will be Friday from 4 to 8 p.m. and then Saturday at 930 before the funeral. Here's a live picture right now out of St. Paul here at 610, where in just hours, Mayor Melvin Carter will deliver his 2023 State of Our City address. He's expected to cover the city's plan for street repairs, among other topics. It's happening at the Oxford Community Center at 1 this afternoon. The city is also live streaming the event on their Facebook page. The clock is ticking this morning. Today is the last day to file your taxes or request an extension. You have until midnight to get your documents into Uncle Sam. And a reminder here to expect a smaller refund since some of the pandemic tax credits have expired. Take a look at some new pictures we just got in overnight of St. Paul. If you look closely out of trees in Mears Park, they're budding, which is why all of our allergies are starting to <laughs> act up, Guy. Oh, don't get me started. I can write a whole essay on how my allergies are bothering me the past couple of days. But I also noticed that, too, last week, uh, the budding on the trees. So I I'm looking forward to things turning green and nice and lush around here. Today's going to be lovely, right? If you're getting ready to step out for your morning drive, temperatures will fall to the upper 20s. Now sunshine in store. Have the sunglasses ready to go this morning. Sun up 623. Wind speeds nice and calm for us, so it should be a smooth commute in. You can see the camera shot behind me. Blue skies, clear conditions, beautiful shadow overlooking Dave Makoska. 34 right now. It actually feels like the air temperature, so it doesn't feel too bad out here. A nice crisp start to the morning with clouds starting to roll in this afternoon. 49 by 1 o'clock this afternoon. 54 for the forecast high. You'll notice the clouds increasing later on this evening, getting off of work by 5, 6 o'clock this evening. Overnight, clouds thicken. Rain showers move in tomorrow morning around 4 a.m. Once it starts raining, it won't rain nonstop all day, but we'll see that those periods of rain and showers and uh, even a couple rumbles of thunder for tomorrow. Here's your seven day forecast. Tomorrow starts this new pattern shift with clouds in wet weather through Thursday. Windy rain coming down sideways, just messy weather. Friday clouds with flurries turning cooler Saturday. Sunshine Sunday, Monday 53.